All right, we're gonna start. Um, we are left off here in page Kuf Lamed Vav. Kuf Lamed Vav, in the middle of the paragraph. And what we're discussing is basically that the the whole idea of receiving the Torah in Purim as opposed to what happened at Har Sinai <coughs> is because at Har Sinai, why didn't receive the Torah fully? Because it came from above. We said yesterday that meant that <coughs> excuse me, that Hashem showed us so much love, He held a mountain over our heads. You can learn that either way. The point is that we were forced into taking the Torah, <coughs> either from fear or we said the mountain could be a mountain of love. According to the Alter Rebbe, that's what it means. And meaning that there was so much revelation of God at that time that we would, <coughs> we had, no, <coughs> so to speak, no other choice but to accept the Torah. How could you not accept God in such a state of revelation? I mean, the Alter was so, so holy, you had to see it. Right? Alter was a holy year. No question about it. <laughs> I think it says in the Zohar Mountain, it means love also. Okay, Baruch Hashem, we've got our Zohar consultant here. Mm-hmm. It's, 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 it's considered a fact. Mountain love. So, <coughs> the idea is that, however, at Purim, we didn't receive it. So he wants to say that therefore it was a true reception because it came fully from us. Nothing was forcing us. He says the same thing is true when it comes to our, the different levels of faith we discussed. The faith that you have in Hashem because your soul above sees is considered a cause. And therefore, your faith is not really essential. Just like the reception of the Torah was not essential, essential because it was, so to speak, forced on us because we saw there was a revelation, so too a faith that comes from revelation. Whereas a faith that comes from basically the fact that there's a continuous revelation of your soul above seeing Hashem, it's good, it's faithful, but it's not, there's something missing because it's, it's not essential, it's because of something else. Whereas if you can have faith... <coughs> Coming from the essence of the neshama, it's not based on anything, and therefore it's it's not able to be taken away. It's not it's not conditional. So that was what we said, and then we, we looked. We said a little bit deeper that even when it comes to the essential faith, the faith that's, that's basically because of the revelation of the essence of your soul or the essence connecting to the essence, even there they're the same. There's the same sort of duality, and we and how does it sound that? That when the, there's a revelation of the soul that comes out as mysterious nefesh, which we said for sure that was one of the main signs of the Raya Mehemna, that he can bring everybody to mysterious nefesh, like in the days of Mordechai. And how does he do it? Because he connects us to the essence of our soul, where we're willing to die for the mitzvahs, even though there is no revelation. However, that mysterious nefesh, compared to, as a, 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 compared to your, what we call kochos hagiluim, which we talked about yesterday for yeah. a few minutes. What is Kochos Agiloim? Let's test you. The, the, the revealed powers of... The revealed powers of the soul. Oh, yeah. The ten spheros. And yes, they are hijacked. Meaning to say that your mysterious nefesh, when you're sort of in a state like Mordechai, the state like the Frida Karebi's generation, <coughs> yeah, he brought them to Mama's mysterious nefesh. They were willing to die for Hashem. Clearly, that's only, you can only do that if you're connected to the essence of their soul. There's no revelations there which is forcing you to do it. However, compared to your regular self, as we said yesterday, your kochos agiloim, your intellect, your emotions, the you that you're normally aware of, this mysterious nefesh is considered like what we say a davar nosaf. It's considered something added on to the real you. It's something that takes you over, hijacks you, and your, your essence of your soul sort of just takes control of the, of the organism and therefore, it truly is your essence coming out, but your essence is presenting itself in such a way that it's your essence is in opposition or some separateness to the rest of you, to the point that the essence overrides the rest of your senses, your, your, your regular daily personality. And then he said, like we see by many people, this is where we left off, we see by many people who stood in a state of mysterious nefesh all the years in Russia, etc., etc., and when they get, came to a place where there was no need for mysterious nefesh, you, you, they sort of went back to being their regular selves. You don't see the essence of their soul upon them anymore. And why is that? Because the essence of their soul was itself like an, an add-on, some cause, 
which basically made them act like that. It wasn't really essentially them. And the proof is when the factors which led them to have mysterious nefesh went away, they went back to being how they were before. So the essence did not like link up with them. It, it remained in such a state that it was sort of them and their essence, which in truth, what kind of an essence is that? Is it really essential if there's things that are not really part of it? If you, know, if the, if you put the essence in a, in a place and say it's over there and everything else is over here, it's not a really <coughs> true... <coughs> depiction of the essence because the true essence is because it's everywhere and there's nothing other than it right so if you're going to put the essence and say it's all the way over there and everything else is over here you're definitely talking about some kind of a limited version of what we normally call the essence because the concept of the essence is that there is no place other than that it is not so this is uh yeah you wanted to say something okay <coughs> So we'll go on inside. The line starts. Wow, that's deep. Kize. Kize sha'amdu mysterious nefesh. The line starts, doesn't start, it ends, excuse me, with the words kize at the end of a period. It's right about in the middle there. Oh, yeah. Kize sha'amdu mysterious nefesh. This that they, they were in mysterious nefesh mode. Meshech kama vakama shanim for a period of many years. It's because it shone upon them a revelation of the essence of their soul, which is the essence of the soul in its, so to speak, position above their revealed powers. Right? That part of them, which is their essential part, as opposed to, and I'm sort of putting emphasis on there, as opposed to their revealed powers, they got to shine from that. Hmm. And since they were dealing with a part of their essence of the neshama, which was positioned above their revealed powers, if you can say such a thing, therefore it did not change their revealed powers, but merely hijacked them, it merely overtook them, and made their revealed powers subservient to the calling of the essence of the neshama for many, many years at a, in a, at a time. Kama v'kama. Many. V'zeh she'etzam ha'neshama hiya etzam gam dekochas ha'giluyim. And this is what we're sort of tapping into a second ago. This that the essence of the soul is also the etzam of the kochos ha'giluyim. Right? The revealed powers. Hu she'etzam ha'neshama hu ha'etzam she'lehem it means that the essence of the soul is also their etzem. And it's therefore not really connected to the revealed powers themselves. La tziur shelehem. To the when he says tziur, it means like the depiction of them, their individuation. Let's read that line again. He's saying that this that we the, this scenario that we're describing in front of us. As I mentioned a moment ago, it's painting the picture that there's something called the essence and the revelation, as though they're two things. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're saying, that the, when we talk about that they had a shine from the essence, it means that the essence of the neshama was, so to speak, the mm -hmm. essence of the revealed powers. Mm -hmm. Right? Which means that there's, it's, 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 it's their unseen sort of, you know, concentrated hidden power um, source of the revealed powers but it does not express itself inside of the real revealed powers in other words we're not totally uncomfortable with talking about the essence like this we uh, oftentimes we talk about the essence in such a way that the essence is something which is put into a juxtaposition with gilui you have etzim and gilui mm -hmm. the essence is something which is unrevealable and therefore cannot really be talked about doesn't have any there's no name tags or anything for it except for essence because it's beyond comprehension. And the revelation which comes out of the essence is not truly a full revelation of the essence. Because it, you can, if, the revelation, if the essence could be revealed, it would reveal. The point is, is that it's essential because it cannot be revealed. Right? And therefore what comes out is merely a ray of the essence. And even though that ray can sometimes be the orient sof, the whole point is that when you're dealing with revelation, by definition, it's not a full depiction of what the essence is. We talk about that a lot. So it's not that strange for us to sort of put the essence in some kind of a, 
some kind of a box, some kind of a place where it's, it's not really everywhere. And it's sort of the hidden thing which cannot be seen. However, what, and, and that's exactly what we're talking about right now, that when you're getting a tap from the essence, when you need to have a serious nefesh, some little shine, some little knock on the door from this unseen, unknowable place has a relationship with the light. It sort of overrides the light. It uses the trump card and can hijack the light. I like that. But it's not, but basically, it does not unify with the light, and nor should it, nor could it, because as we basically said, the essence cannot be seen, cannot be known. It can't seemingly, it has nothing to do with the light. So it's, it just can affect the light, but it's not, it cannot be the light, as in, in the, what we're de- described right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, so with the essence being like mysterious nefesh and hijacking the ten sephirots, and not combining, so it's like temporary, it's not permanent. Right. Is, I don't know if this is a difficult question, but it, it, what is it, the ultimate purpose is to draw that same essence, but have it combine or have it be permanent. So it's not uh, a finite revelation where it's infinite. The, the new light that Mashiach's going to bring into the world has to be at every corner of the earth. So is that only through tshuva, like they were speaking about earlier in the in the mimer or here? You say how do we yeah, how, how do we how does it, how does it not be temporary? <clears throat> okay, so that's exactly what we're going to go into oh, explain. Okay, okay. No, but it's, uh, but. But, but the point is, not being temporary is a different understanding of what the essence is. That's what I'm driving at. Right, it's two separate piles. Not two, two separate piles means then, then, then the essence is, by definition, not joined with the revealed powers. And therefore, at best, it can have a relationship with it. And, and, but it's going to be temporary because it's not essentially it. They're two different things. Okay. So they can have a relationship. The relationship can come together. It can also go apart. Right. But if you come to the realization that the essence is truly everything, that even the revelations that come out of the essence, which although we just described, by definition, they're not essence. But what else do you think they are if they're not essence? In other words, maybe they don't fully encapsulate the entirety of the essence, but there's nothing about them that is not of the essence and, and is the essence. So in other words, the notion of realizing that even the rays and the sort of finite aspects of creation, which in general, we look at them as sort of like clippers, something other than God. In truth, when you come to the realization that there is nothing other than Him, then even His finite parts, even the ten powers are also Him, and they're not any less Him, because Hashem can basically be expressing Himself infinitely, or He can express Himself finitely, and, there's, and neither one has more of a monopoly on who is Hashem. Then it comes out that even the finite powers are of the essence, and it doesn't have to have a relationship upon them, it is them. How to bring that out is your question, and that's we're going to discuss okay. it inside a little bit. Okay. Doesn't that also mean that, that Umaba is now the better place to be? Well, because it's like the essence and errors of it. What does that mean? The world, oh, but the world to come. Why is the world to come essence and revelation exactly? Because be- before we're saying... Well, now we're just saying that the essence is everything. So even the revelation is also essence. So before we're saying that this is the world, <coughs> be, this is the, the world you should be because this is where you can tap into the essence. And who wants revelation? Like we were saying yesterday, I don't want your own ba, I don't right. want your own wazeh, I just want you. But right. now that we're saying that that the essence is everything, that the revelation is also the essence. So It is, but you have to be brought to that point. In other words, and who brings it to that point? You can't be brought to that point up there. Up there, the scenario is that the essence and the revelations are not the same thing. The purpose of being in this world, making a dir b'tachtonim, is by yidin to make the to make it clear that the separateness is also God. In other words, that's the whole idea of what it means to be in a body. Wow! And then we we then cl- like fix all the worlds above us as it is right now. Those it's not clear to the higher worlds. Just like it's not clear to us that they are actually part of the essence. Even the even the Olam Abba with all the light and everything that's going on, as we said before, the light blinds. Remember we said that basically being in the light makes it so you cannot accurately see the essence. Because, because remember what we said before, basically, only in a situation where you're not there's no cause basically making you be godly can even surface that you're essentially connected with God. There's something, there's something sort, of, sort of be forcing you. And up there, the revelations are what's forcing you. So they also don't have a clear realization that they are essential. They just feel themselves to be, so to speak, in love with the essence. They're on board with what the essence is, but they also see a duality. They're also no, part of the well. world, right? They're just a refined, they're like a ref, more refined part of the world. 
Whereas here, when you bring it down to this level, the world basically, of course. Is, it, you know, it doesn't even obey, obey Hashem. Mm-hmm. But, it's, there's, but the separateness that, that takes place, is, it has to be refined only by a Yid fusing these two things together. Goy Achad Ba'aretz, we're called, the, the nation of oneness in the land. That when we make oneness in the lowest place, it's going to retroactively make it clear that the oneness is even in the higher places. Wow. Like Olam mm-hmm. Haba. Not clear? <laughs> well, yeah. It is clear. But we look at it retroactively, but it, he was, he is, he will be. So really there's no, it's not retroactive. Oh, I guess it would be considered retroactive. I'm just saying, yeah. it, it, wait, your question is, you still have it or you're... What's that? Did, well, we'll, we'll see what it says, like if the, the essence and the revelation are exactly the same thing, if they're different. Okay. So it sounds like it's not even possible for us. No, no, no. The essence and the revelation, he's explained it, right? There's the sephirot and then there's the essence. The essence of the revelation is mysterious nefesh when the essence takes over the sephirots but doesn't combine completely. The essence is something completely different. That is permanent. The essence of the revelation is temporary. All right, so let's go, let's go inside a little bit. We'll see a few more letters and words from the Rebbe here. Okay, so it says, Vagiloi de etzim hanshama, or after these brackets. No, the truth is, it's, uh, you're getting it 100%. It's, it's complicated yeah. to get to the next level. We didn't see what the Rebbe said about it, so we're just yeah, yeah, speculating. Vagiloi de etzim hanshama beze, the revelation of the essence of the soul in this, Shunishbar benidka mezeh shunim tzabagalas. From the uh, we're going now, mode B, right? Now you're broken and crushed, not because the bad guys are coming against you, but because you're just found in gullus. This is like the whole idea that you can reach your essence, kustis lamaur, even after the gezer of Haman is over, mm-hmm. just because we want Mashiach now. So this whole thing, who shigam kochas agiloim shalom. That means that even your revealed powers. Hatsiur de Kochas which means the the actual depiction, the, the shape, the color of your revealed powers, the individual individuation of them. Hem Kamochad Ima etzim. They become one with the essence, as we're saying. Which means which means that um, again it's not a it's not a hijacking situation. Is that your mind is equally as given over essentially to as as your as the essence of your soul is. In other words, your heart is right. equally given over essentially. It doesn't have to be that you you act, so to speak, in a way that doesn't make any sense. Right? When you have a serious nefesh, you're acting in a way that doesn't make any sense because essentially your mind does not agree to this. Your heart does not agree to this, but there's something deeper in you that's going to move <coughs> through you. Yeah. But when you bring the essence, that's only a partial revelation of the essence. If you bring the essence to be revealed in full, so then who said that your mind and heart have to be in conflict with the essence? In, especially when your mind and heart, to begin with, are meant to be um, also a revelation of the essence. There's just a different type of revelation of the essence. See, we're getting to this idea that what is infinite and what is finite. And the two of them together represent Hashem. Usually, if you, you're, you're a, the, we think of the spheros as basically klippa. You know, we talk about them as levushim. We talk about the spheros, especially in Basi Lagani. We talked about we we're talking about shtus to kedusha, if you recall. Mm-hmm. We we're saying you got to get out of everything, and even the, they would take off their clothes, the prophets, because yeah. and and what is the clothes? We said the clothes was basically what Adam Arishon put on him when he sinned. So yeah. clothes are essentially connected with being disconnected from Hashem. And we said what are the clothing? The original clothing is is, is your ten spheros. You're basically your thought, speech, and action. Also, like also your your wisdom and your Emotion, because any body, in a certain sense, is already concealing the oneness of Hashem in full, seemingly. Because we normally think of Hashem as an infinite being, which cannot be described. If you're going to attempt to describe Him, the description is going to really hide the whole infinite nature of Him. So therefore, if we want God to sort of take over our lives, what do we, what do we normally think of it as? All the finite parts of ourselves should be disbanded. Mm-hmm. Be- and therefore, we do- it won't make sense to us. We won't emotionally make sense to us either because we need God to step into the picture and He's infinite. And whatever finite parts we have are clearly have to get out of the way if we want, the- if we want God to take over. Right. Except when you go deeper and realize that both the infinite and the finite are revelations of, of the Hashem's essence. In fact, His yeah. essence is a dual partnership, dual citizenship with both of those things. And pre- precisely because of that, we have no idea what the essence is. That's beyond comprehension. But what it does tell us... <clears throat> 
is that there's no necessity that if you want to connect with the essence of God, it has to, you have to tap into something infinite which is beyond your own being, beyond your own understanding. On the contrary, if you're only tapping into the, es- the essence by negating your regular self, it's a sign that you're not really tapping into the truest nature of the essence because the essence bears both the infinite and the finite. So if it's not uh, translated uh, to you, you're only having a partial experience of the essence, the infinite experience, as opposed to the finite one bound up with it. And therefore, the true experience is when it's not kamikaze style. It's mamish organized kamikaze style. In other words, you're, yeah, you're still willing to give your life, but it's, be, but it because, it's because you're fully on board with that. Every, every ounce of your being is on board with that. You're planning to give your life. You're plotting. You're structuring. You've got businessmen around the world explaining to you how to do it. You know, it's not, it's not just like a wild experience of something beyond you it's a it's a ca- because you get it your in essence is also revealed with your self your in mm-hmm. your, your intellect and so forth so this is yeah this is what we're saying now with the true essence and and this comes out when not when you're in a state of mysterious nefesh nahama is coming after you this is when everything's fine it's just that you want mashiach now and suddenly you this is what enable if you get crushed truly crushed like you would be if someone was chasing after you because even though you're just sitting in YTD one day and no one's and you got everything you need but if you're crushed you find that deepest essential part of yourself that's a sign that it's it's you've joined you're, you're joining the true nature of the essence not the essence which has to override yourself but the essence which is also one oh. with yourself The truth is a long footnote here. Mm-hmm. I don't know if we should tackle it or not. Hmm. Let's pass it for a second. V'yesh lomar, we want to say, Dezeh she'etam anasham avetzir dekochos hem bedugmas shnei inyanim. So we're just basically we're reiterating now inside what we said. This that the essence of the soul and the revealed powers of the soul are like two things. That's only true when you're putting the essence of the soul into a finite category. Mm-hmm. Right? When do you see it that your revealed powers and your essence are two different things? When you're dealing with an, nature, an aspect of your essence which is not the true essence. You're, you're, you're relegating the essence to being something, so to speak, infinite, as it were, or essential which is beyond and therefore not translatable to the revealed powers. And therefore, you're, you're, it's not the real essence. You're putting the essence in a limit when you look at it like that. Mm-hmm. And the, what is its limit? Is that it's above your revealed powers. That's its limitation. It's something totally beyond. It's something totally infinite. It's, it, which normally people would say that that's like its, its positive quality. But when you get deeper into the matter, that's its limitation that you're putting on it. It's infinite and it's not finite. It's essential and it's not revealed. But the way the essence of the... And that's not totally a ridiculous statement. Because the way Hashem basically... Create, once Hashem created the world, He did hide His Atmos. Right? Yeah. And therefore, anything that's going to be seen is or in Sof, or a contraction thereof. And there, Hashem sort of separated the two powers. He has His power of limitation, He has His power of, of unlimitation. Right? And you really can only be in one or the other. Like, if you're experiencing the Orin Sof, you're not experiencing the finite world. If you're experiencing the finite world, you're not experiencing the Orin Sof. And Hashem did that. He made what's called a Tzimtzum, and He, like, separated night from day. Remember in the Garden of Eden, it was day and night at the same time? It was, like, a really weird experience there? <laughs> yeah. That's because that was a throwback to the real deal. Wow. Which means that before Hashem made this separation, in, as I was saying, the essence as it is actually Mushrash, in the Atmos, which is as in its source, it has both of these powers simultaneously. It's only that after he made some operations, these two things became sort of untranslatable to each other. But if you go back to where the essence really comes from, it obviously has both of these powers simultaneously if it's able to wield one or the other at will. It can make an orient so and it can simultaneously make a finite world. And it's doing both of them at the same time. Even though the two worlds can't experience each other, obviously the God that's making them both at the same time can. 
Mm-hmm. So if you go back to the essence before all this stuff came out, as it were, there you have both of these things simultaneously. Yeah. And there the essence is not limited by being something other than the revelations. The revelations are, in, are with the essence together. Right. You're loving it, David. <laughs> and you've got to sit next to me more often. Well, 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 no, that's only true if, if you wasn't possible. being offered to yeah. you on a silver platter. In other words, Hashem made everything in order for us to have that experience. He only made the separated worlds and put infinite and finite in two different places so a Yid would come along and put them back together again. So it seems impossible. That would be true if you were just a regular part of the creation. But you're not. You already have inside of you both of these two things. You're already infinite and finite at the same time. The only thing is you have to bring out your infinite quality. But you have to bring it, there's two ways to bring it out. You can either bring it out in such a way where it overrides and hijacks your finite qualities, or you can bring it out in such a way that it, res- it, it resides in the midst of the land. Wow. Right? And that's what it means like a practicing yid. That's why, really, it's not like your faith in Judaism doesn't take you out of the world, it puts you more into the world. In general, we have, that's what our practice looks like. But it can be brought very deep. It can be literally, it can be an infinite being. The Jewish people are infinite. You see it in Gashmias. We cannot be destroyed as much as they will try, right? And we're the smallest and the weakest, and yet we're eternal. So you see we are a living testimony to the concept of something infinite living inside of us, something finite. But the point is, we have to, that's our neshama. We have to bring that into our lives. If you will start to have that going on with your life, and he's going to start to... So guess what? Soon, godliness is going to be found everywhere. So this is what the Rebbe is saying, basically. The final mimer is like, okay, go for it. You know, I'm telling you that you can do it. I'm telling you what to do. But, so Purim had both, because there was during the decree where we sort of tapped into oh, the essence via with mysterious nefesh. And there was after the decree, which is, which is where the famous line, the Jewish people received upon themselves what they only began to do at the time of Antur, it exi- it, it's found in the, in the Megillah after the decree, which is really the Rebbe's whole Chiddush here, which is no one ever said this before, is that it's going on, this is the lesson of the Megillah, that even when things are good, you can reach the essence, and that's because you reach the real essence, where it does not have to override. But that didn't last. Did it last, you're saying? I mean... No, I think it lasted in that... It only lasted when arousal from below. It, it lasted in that, in that we received the Torah. In other words, it, was, it, it, it made its impact. It changed the nature of, the, of creation. In other words, before the Torah was given into the world, it was a situation where we, had, we did not have Matan Torah. We didn't even have the infinite aspect in the world because even though Hashem always had it, it requires a reception on our end to get it in. So Mount Torah, we thought, was we hit, we hit jackpot. We got the Torah. It turns out we didn't. Because it only got a certain mere ray of the Torah based on the fact that we did not accept it in full. So yeah, a major change in, in, the, in the sort of composition of earth happened uh, then, yeah. which never went away. But just like Mount Torah, it was the, we received the Torah. Now you've got to use it. You know? So in other words, it's not, it's not like it, it made the Geula come, but it did make the reception of the Torah a done deal. So there's no more question whether or not that level of revelation came in. So this is like a set, can I make a simple little analogy to see, if I, to see if I get this concept? It's not going to be adequate, but I, I pictured it, I visualized like Hashem just to entertain himself, just, just to like, make, just, just for like kicks. He just created like this like ridiculously incredible mind puzzle like a Rubik's Cube or something like that's the, the world you know and he just created this thing it's like very only he could solve it and the only way he could solve it is by splitting himself into new just say for say maybe three but it's infinite like way more but he had to divide himself into separate parts so that they could all come together and kind of like all put their hands on it and like look at it from different angles and like fix and solve the Rubik's Cube just to like show himself or just to like experience like how cool he actually is like just for entertainment basically merely for like kicks like he did it he, like, is that sort of uh, yes that is wow. basically uh, that to the we, we do say yeah. that basically this is like Hashem uh, that, Hashem is, pl- is like playing you know yeah 
that actually is the same thing as the Jews. Like we started out as one soul and now we like got split up into Bina, all these different Sadiq's past and we're all separate, but we're all going to come back together as one. Yeah. Kind of like his analogy. There's, there's one variable that I forgot Bro, about. Yeah. Is that if, so even if you have the, um, an Omazet, if there's still du- duality. Even if the if the the essence and the and the guli is the same exact thing. Yeah. That there's yeah. That's, but there's still duality. There's still spiritual and physical. You have duality, but you're you're probably no, the I'm duality is not part. Of the, right. But, but I'm saying that there's another variable. Yeah. Which is the I forgot. Which is not the almost as not the ultimate final resting place that we want. We want to have the Tiyus Mason. We want to have the re- resurrection of the dead. Okay. And that then there will but be. That's going really to take right. place in Olam Hazeh. Uh, of course, yeah, 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 right. Was that? But in that place, then there won't be any duality of, of physical, spiritual, essence, guru, everything will be unified. Right? Yeah, well, it's already. It's just we don't see it. That's gonna be the revelation right. of what already of this of the of the essence. Of mm-hmm. course, yeah. <laughs> that was okay. <laughs> All right, so let's just go on here. So he's saying that when it comes to the essence of the sum of the of the soul, which is truly rooted in the essence, like as it is. In the essence itself, not before it comes out and separates into two. Hapshitus yeah. da neshama, so the simple oneness of the soul, vatsir da kochoshala, and the description of its powers, hemkulachat. There they are one. Now there is one little analogy which is helpful to understand this because the mind cannot really do much with the notion that there's something which is simple and undivisible and infinitely divided at the same time. Right. It's no, it's just, it's, it, we, we tell ourselves constantly that's what is going on. And we don't, it's like just, a, it's annoying because the mind can't wrap around. We were in a situation where we can't see that, we can't really understand it. And the, and the Rebbe Rashav one time even said, if I knew him, I would be him. That's as good as, good as it gets. But there is one really good analogy to understand this, to try and like wrap your head around this to some slight degree, which is the ending of the letters, right? Hash, your Rubik's Cube is really what described as the letters, the infinite like, combination of letters that, can, that is the speech of God, right? So those letters find themselves in varying degrees of is-ness, right? Of, of, of Matthias, of being. So you find, and, we, and the simple analogy is you find written letters, spoken letters, and thought letters. It's the same Aleph, but one of them is much a concrete thing that you can like hold with your hands. One of them is a... Is a, is a pronounceable thing that you can like hear it has clearly expression in the Gashmi's world but not nearly at the level of physical of a, like a letter right it doesn't have shape for example and one is mamish in your mind right which is a spiritual thing you cannot with a microscope you cannot go and find the letter Aleph in your mind it's 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 actually ruchnius right if it's taking place in a Gashmi's world but it's like as a, it's ruchnius in a Gashmi's world but that's nothing it goes higher there's letters that exist even before they come into your thought process. And those are the letters of your, inside of your emotions, which means they have not even expressed themselves outwardly even to you. They're like buttle. And those same letters exist even in your chokhm bin and das and beyond and so forth. So the other analogy which goes along with that is the difference between the letters of a Sefer Torah, which are considered like something that you put onto a parchment, versus, let's say, the letters of the Luchos, where it says that they were... From side to side of the of the Ten Commandments, they were the letter itself was a non-letter. In other words, the letters, the the, the the existence of the letter was not a thing. It was no thing, right? So you could imagine that it's not a problem to have sort of simple oneness if you have a bunch of no things taking place there. If you have things there, so then you have it's gonna, they're going to bump up. It's divisible, right? It's 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 a compound. But if the things that are making a compound are like air, are an absence of a thing, so it's really, theoretically, it does not get in the way of something simplistically one. Because how many, how, it doesn't, right? It's, there's nothing it, there. There's yeah. nothing there. Even though the, like, the whole structure and the whole Rubik's Cube, like you're saying, is fully there, but since its status is basically that it's existing at a, letter of, a level of nothing, its being is a non-being, therefore you can have these two things simultaneously. And this is what he's saying, that at that level, the simplicity of the soul and its kochos and its powers and its, its description are literally one. They don't get in each other's way. Wow. Accordingly, we could say, next page, the that the level of the luminary of the soul, 
Shemizgalis al yedei Mesiris Nefesh, which is revealed through Mesiris Nefesh, the lower level, he etzim and neshama kamoshi mugderis. It's it, that's the essence of the soul as it is limited. Be'inyan hapshitos. Its limitation is that it's simply one. Lamay limitzir de kochos. It's above any limitation. In other words, its limitation is that you're saying it's above limitation. That itself is a limitation, right? Because you're saying that when you say something has no limits, right? You're also simultaneously saying it cannot be limited. Wow, yeah. Right? Yeah. And that itself is a limitation. <laughs> it's a little bit of a tongue twister, but it's, a, it's, a, it's an obvious thing. Yeah. So when you're having Messiris Nefesh, it's because you are connecting to the essence of your soul. We're not saying that the, it's the, essence, the whole Mimer was talking about when you get to Messiris Nefesh because Mordechai brought you to your essence. But it's a level of the essence which is limited because it's, it's as, aspecting only the simplistic un- limited nature of the, of, the, of the essence of the soul and it's ignoring the finite nature whereas the, the the luminary of the soul which reveals itself by being broken just because Mashiach is not here that brings out of you the revelation of the essence of the soul in its true place, where it's, there's nothing missing from it. It's the true unlimitedness, which means it bears limitation as well. And basically, why? Because it's not created by any cause. In other words, look at it like this. Let's just go back to it. The whole thing was like he was building, building blocks. He was basically saying that why is faith based on a cause not as strong? Because it's the cause that's making it happen. And therefore, the cause is is blocking out and, and making mm-hmm. making the the essence not be able to be seen. Whenever you have so much light, and th- therefore I'm going to receive the Torah because God is so great. So you, even though it might be true that I would receive the Torah, even if God wasn't so great, I can't see that because basically God is, is making miracles all over the place. That's my Torah. That's my Torah. And we're relating that to a serious message.